what up what up what is up guys it's rich man z back for good yes so i want to welcome you to another edition of retrospective reviews i'm your host richie rich rick Kwan. pretty rick is what i call them and yes it's here on this uh, on this matter we should say on this part of like uh, this faraway place on youtube where we look at like a lot of retrospective reviews from the past so yes yes where we look at from the 90s period as well so i hope everyone's been having a great start to the 2024 and just remember in 2024 unlike in the other years put those in the past because in 2024 yes 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 the wallet must be updated and yes 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 you must hand in your application to the rich team and yes 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 it's 2024 will be the year of big moves so yes um uh, to go straight to the point um if you've been following the series um i've looked at um after looking at the house party series which again phenomenal really really kick-started like a lot of the excellent <clears throat> excellent comedies that we see now in this day and age um the friday series pretty much took the mantle in 20 in 2015 995 looked at the first friday that came out in 995 and then of course the sequel uh that came out in 2000 which i felt was a not a significant step down but was not as great as the first uh, Friday 995 and this one we're gonna look at the final Friday film the end of the trilogy the third in this uh you, without a doubt still like a classic and a very rewatchable series even next friday we're going to be looking at friday after next that came out in 2002 so yes friday after next uh, which came out in uh, 2002 towards the end um for the people who don't know this is like uh, the christmas christmas like black films uh that came out around this time as well you could probably say preachers wise but that came out in the middle 90s but of like the comedy like all star black black cast that came out this was one of like the most maybe notable christmas uh films and definitely when i get more into this movie i'll definitely say like the christmas theme like really helps this movie as well and you'll get my opinions later to why i think this is especially looking at this back now i believe it is more superior than next friday and is definitely the second best sequel of this uh of this yes so um friday after next uh, which was directed by friday after next was directed by marcus Raboy as well and this uh, particular director is someone who's has a background in music videos and i believe is one of ice cubes like friends associates who took the role of directing this full-length movie and i think he pretty does it does a pretty good job the cool thing with friday after next and even like watching this back in my 30s is it brings it back a lot what made the first friday better as well it, it, it has more of a kind of in this film more of like um ghetto environment if we say like it's like they're not in the suburbs like next friday they're not so much outside it's more like this kind of inner city kind of hood feel that the the first one captured and i believe this um captures well and i think another thing that this movie excels better than the second one is definitely the characters like i'm gonna run through the character list um a lot of people know the most the uh, highlights of friday after next but um the character the the, the all-star cast in this really helps um <clears throat> really helps this film like really uh be one of not just even in the friday series but one of the best like um comedy starring an all black cast right yes yeah, so to go back on my issue on this um as i mentioned on the other friday series like i'd seen like for i'd seen we do i used to have again if um, people know from this area there was a place called blockbuster so and hmv back in the united kingdom so i always remember as a kid having the trilogy of friday next friday and friday after next um but what would happen was most of the times they would never be a friday after next because we were was out or had homework or school so it, i always remember and i mentioned this on my next friday review that 
back in UK um, it was very common on like uh, the Christmas week or possibly the last days before Easter they someone would bring in next Friday and we would watch it as a class as well so like we were used to watching that never the first Friday but they would bring next Friday there was occasions when they bought this one Friday after next but for there was a while where everyone used to believe like next Friday was the best Friday in the series which is uh, now we can like put that to rest it is the weakest of the trilogy yes since as Richard Rich said next Friday is the weakest of the trilogy and um, Friday after next was always that one that you could again watch around the Christmas time so this was the one that um, at the time because how next Friday got like really pushed like kind of shoved down our throats um, as kids teenagers at this time i used to think next friday was the best and uh i used to think friday after next was the weakest at that time i just at the time i was just like man i didn't i didn't like um because there's times in this film that they had a lot of like the noises and this type of comedic like tones that were very similar to house point too so at that time i didn't like it but re-watching it back i think it's absolutely terrific awesome yeah so if we run down the character list um i think it's super cool that um this time we got a uh, recurring we got the cast we got a lot of um cool characters that were in next friday like the highlights from next friday do return in this second one i think the only one really is missing is sugar kim whitley it would have been really nice if she came in here but um to start off you got ice cube who pretty much is playing the same role pretty much playing ice cube uh in this self he comes back as craig for the third time um and of course uh day day played by mike Epps, who it, it's funny because when i see mike Epps in the second one mike Epps um in playing day day is meant to be like this clumsy he thinks he's a pimp and uh, he thinks he can get girls he thinks he can do he's the shit and he really isn't um he, in in this <laughs> friday after <the> next <laughs> he has turned up even more because like um what the whole um story is and friday after next is pretty much that um the craig and day they get robbed on christmas day and on this day on oh, sorry not christmas day i think it's just before the christmas and they are due to pay rent by their landlord uh downstairs uh, who lives in the same place as well so they get these jobs to be top fly motherfucking security guards as well <coughs> to be security guards working in the same area where um john witherspoons and uncle elroy dc curry made this like barbecue uh, mother's barbecue so they have their own restaurant so um when they're working uh there that's when you see my caps like really turn up like he's stopping he's stopping cars to park he's shouting at old ladies he's trying to fight with like young kids so he's very very like uptight in this as well so it's, it's a cool performance uh, of my calves and what i didn't even know which was a trip when i first watched this film because again we watched this in vhs no no sorry no it was dvd at that time so the aspect ratio wasn't as big as if you're watching it on hd tv now i had no idea my case was the um guy near towards the end of the movie who has the guns like stay out my collie greens stay out my collie greens that guy i i it was a trip it wasn't until later i was like you can see the makeup on my calves as well so i think he does well uh, uh in this role as well it's nice because when you do see my calves playing day day you kind of forget about smokey even though chris tucker was amazing in the first film you do really forget and you're like my calves comes in playing day day and really owns the role and it's like it's hard to see another friday if they do make one without seeing uh mike Epps playing day day again so it's great yeah so mike Epps and ice cube day day and craig are in the uh, main main like seats again like the main protagonists of this series then again just the cast that comes from the second one you got uh dc curry playing uncle will right yeah uncle will right i don't care how you get again his role is more smaller than in the second one because he was introduced in that one so i can understand where he's smaller and even john witherspoon is when his role is not as big as it was in the other two ones that preceded this but 
again it's fantastic and what i think was really cool to connect to the first one um the craig's mother who i keep forgetting the name let me get it down let me get it up i should say yes yeah, so anna marie horsford um who plays betty jones who was the mother mother of craig and if you don't know she was the security guard who appeared in uh, the wayne brothers series so she comes back after not being in the second one as well so it's nice it's like a connection to the first one it would have been cool if regina king uh ice cube's sister had played in this as well uh, and honestly because it's funny um this film does feel like a trilogy film so it would have been cool if some of the first carry the ones in the first movie had appeared again in this and it would have been cool if craig's family i.e regina king would have appeared in this one so that would have been cool so she does great in here so you got her you've got um as i said don curry Vince, the santa who's played by ricky smiley as well who um again has an excellent podcast which i listened to and he was again another comedian who was on the deaf comedy deaf comedy jam series as well and yeah he does cool as Santa for like a pretty much first role he does great and the reason i mentioned ricky smiley and i guess the timing of this gonna be better is maybe for a lot of people this is where they first saw one and I mean one, <laughs> Cat Williams playing Money Mine. So yeah, we're going to talk more about uh, one, and I mean one, Cat Williams later on. But um, just in, just on like his role, especially because this is probably really a lot of people's first time seeing him. First time, he really killed this role, honestly. Like I can't even imagine Friday After Next with out oh, cat williams money mike as well so he's jo his job is phenomenal as well and yeah we're gonna again i'm gonna i got some thoughts comments to talk more about him um of the friday girls in this one um so as i i even put a show of this you in the first one you had the fine Nia long who still looks amazing even to this day incredible beauty i've made it very apparent apparent the second girl who was in next friday lisa lisa rodriguez the latina chica I was not really a big fan of her as the second girl honestly I, I just think like from in the first one when you had Nia Long and you had even Miss Parker who would they were way more harder than Lisa Rodriguez uh, character in the second one so just not memorable in the third one you got um a little Mike's uh <laughs> oh <laughs> you got little Mike's girl uh played by Katie O'Board and she's playing um can they first play Donna Donna so Donna is one of like uh, Mike's and this, so because money Mike um, where they're basically working so Craig and Dee they have their they're the security of this like say retail park and money Mike has this like fashion store as well so Donna is one of like the he's Donna is a basic assistant uh, to money Mike and this girl is an amazing beauty man she's got like the best eyes she's got that nice caramel skin and she almost looks like a supermodel and it plays off so well because money Mike who overdresses himself <laughs> he has his hat he has his boots he even has a cane and like uh, you just see that the height difference between them two as well and like throughout the movie like I said till the end Craig is trying to make his moves to get with the beautiful Donna but she honestly oh, it, amazing like i said again she's i think even her this is probably a lot of people's first yeah in, first introduction to the beautiful katie o'bird i know she appeared in soul plane with kevin horn and she also had like a little cameo in the scorpion king film with dwayne the rock johnson as well but yeah i mean when you're talking about friday girl she is sensational golly Whew. it's getting hot yeah and also definitely i also want to definitely give a shout out to a very underrated comedian in this uh um so the one who <laughs> the one who owns the holy moly donut shop uh max his name is max uh jarani he's uh i believe he's from i don't want to mess it up it could be he's from asia i think he's from iran honestly if i made an error i'm gonna put that here as well this was his first break kind of like big breakout movie as well and as i said it's not like the biggest role as well but it's a very memorable as well like just he's like interactions with Dede and craig as well and he's like hey buddy hey buddy freeze come out at night what 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 we come out what, what, what? <laughs> it's hilarious exchange as well and when he gets that beat down at the end and he fires craig and Dede as well it's classic so definitely max is a good he has a lot of 
comedic shows like on YouTube so I definitely encourage you to check out as well so the the supporting cast in this as I said definitely is better than in next Friday as well and the good thing with this movie Friday after next is there's a lot of movement as well whereas like I said in next Friday where pretty much they're in the same ghetto in the beginning of Friday right in the initial then they get just pretty much stay pretty much in that suburban era area um, with like the little jokers and the latina um the little jokers and uh, carla lisa rodriguez as well so it's like it's in, in this one there's there's plenty much movement and there's also more of a sense of urgency in this movie because from the beginning uh i, I mean a cool way to like introduce uh, this movie it's like um again santa comes and when he should be giving presents he ends up jacking <laughs> kirk and Dede. comes in steals he makes up a set he makes a sandwich like he had the nerve i mean the audacity to make a sandwich while he was trying to steal uh presents still gives uh still just basically rub their place he has the audacity to make a sandwich and he then tries to he, he then escapes and i even love like whilst the credits are playing so it's like you have that kind of cold open you have a cool animation like credits which was not really seen before in the early two so it's, it's different it, it keeps in line with the early friday films the friday films before but it's something different more fresh as well so yeah i mean it's, it's a great way to introduce this film and yeah so supporting has this is definitely great um i feel like the uh, um what this movie did which was possibly another good thing is that they some characters were not brought back um as i said in the second one probably the two most ones who who were you could say important who didn't return to this was tiny lister playing debo and also kim willie playing sugar as well so they didn't appear in this but they basically had like in some ways like a replacement so for kim whitley uh, instead of her um or it's like a new squee El Elroy's girlfriend in this one is basically the sister to Kim Whitley playing some more in this as well and I really am a fan of some more the comedian I watched her set some deaf comedy jam and her stand-up shows and I think she's great it would have been nice if her role was more significant in this as well because she appears in a few scenes as well and she's just no I don't even think she has that much lines as I can remember, she only appears when they're in the restaurant uh, owned by uh, John Witherspoon, Pops, and John Witherspoon and uh, Elroy's, uh, that restaurant, um, the barbecue place. That's the only time she appears as well. And then in the replacement for Tiny Lister, Debo is Terry Crews again. And again, I think this is one of his first early appearances then. This is my opinion on on the Terry Crews like replacing basically Debo because very similar both like big muscular guys both um man like I, I know Tony Lister played in wrestling and even Terry Crews had like little stints and appearances like in the uh wrestling back in the day but are both like are supposed to be imposing kind of bully dudes as well um again i really do love tiny listers um debo in the first one because he was just some like just a bully do you understand like picking on people who are smaller than him taking advantage it was like that as well terry cruz in this he's i wouldn't say so much as a bully in this because there's even scenes where <laughs> He's, he's different in some cases because I remember when he's just really only dealing with Craig and Day Day because he's he owes the money to the mother. Do you understand? Like I feel like if he didn't have any problem, he wouldn't be bothering them. Like Devo was like, okay, what you got in your pockets and stealing chains, slapping women. He was really, really like a menace. Whereas Terry Crews is just more. Um, Terry Crews playing Damon in this. I don't think he's someone who would bother you. you he's not going to bother you if you don't bother him, or you at least you owed something to him. As you could see in the party near the end, before, of course, he had his little, <laughs> his little like a scene with like little Mike, Money Mike, little Mike with Money Mike Cat Williams as well. But you could see him in the party. He was pretty much chilling. Like he was there. He, he, he just he just didn't have that bully tactic like Debo as well and I love I love Terry Crews huge fan it was nice to see him in this and again I love how the character just like how Mike Gibbs replaced Chris Tucker it wasn't a copy Damon is his own character and Debo 
Damon is his own kind of person. He's his own character. Yeah, so um, I'll run down the story again. As I said, so like on Christmas, or just on around Christmas time, um, Craig and Dede, who are like roommates, um, they basically live together. They get their house like robbed on Christmas, around Christmas time. Um, they call the police. The police, with their finger up their ass, basically do fuck all uh, to help them. And they basically got paid the rent to Damon's mother, who this was the woman who was in like Maureen and House Party, um, as well, always paying like the mature, like mother or something. And so they're roommates, and basically they got to pay this rent money. They got robbed. They got this job that starts on this day. All, all the stuff that can go on Friday, all the thing, all the stuff that can go down on Friday, is happening again as well. And like I said, where they work. It's basically the same area in the retail park where uh, Uncle Elroy and Craig's dad work in the same place as the restaurant that they open. Uh, because it's said that after next Friday, a lot of the money that went, um, a lot of the money <laughs> they used and it went, and they were able to use that money. I think, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, I think this was the money that they got from the baby jokers at the end so in next friday they were able to use that money and just invest it into this restaurant as well and one thing that's really cool is once they're there like when craig and day they are able to start their first job the gag pretty much in this is like uh what happened to the last security guards this is one question like um craig keeps saying what happened do you know what happened to the last security guards no one says anything but it turns out at the end that they got beat down by this um by this gang of like fogs who basically were the i believe it was even like the nephews or the nieces it could be the sons of the old women the church uh gospel women who were singing uh on the on the wall on in front of the stores where my kids ran they they went to them and he threw this was like Phew, you host come here gotta go for this corner as well this place yeah yeah so like um what by the time like um basically when craig and they they, they basically find out that um because as i said my case was very militant this whole time like he's stopping just people he's acting like his top flight security which he really isn't as well and basically um the santa claus he actually appears again when craig and day they are trying to uh pull another blunt out so once um once like that santa claus ricky smiley he comes again and he tries to steal uh when they come back and they tell the police they don't do anything that's where the basically the ones um my guess was blowing the whistle at and uh, they, they was blowing the whistle too um the mo them not called these uh, the fogs and guys who built be up the last security guards so it's around this time where basically they're not gonna basically continue this job craig and day they basically run they throw away their um security uniform they whistle they throw it away <laughs> It's really hilarious as well because they go back to the restaurant to pretend they want break. They're eating their food and Molly comes in and fires them. So around this time, this is when it changes to which I really love with this film is there's a party sequence and it brought a lot of like um, uh, reminiscence, like vibes of the first house party, of like uh, when you know brothers and sisters are coming uh, and they're just kicking it, just kicking it. It's a Friday night, honestly, we ain't worried about like. Uh, any other problems when we're just gonna kick it so it brought a lot of vibes of the first house party film and craig's idea was basically make this like hey um people can come but they gotta chip in they gotta basically pay some uh, money to come in as well so it's like a yeah it's like a friday like party as well so this would they could use this to get the rent and hopefully they can catch ricky smiley center and get that money again yeah so as i said in in my like closing comments as well so my final thoughts on friday after next as well so as i said in when i watched this film in the first uh this i this came out 2002 so like originally i may have watched this around maybe this time like around maybe 2004 2005 as well again i i didn't like this film i hated it i thought it was the worst of the friday series watching it later now in my early 30s i have way more appreciation for this film um i'm gonna of course 
talk about uh, possibly the big highlight of this which was Cat Williams as well at this time I believe he was relatively unknown just like many of the comedians who appeared on Def Comedy Jam he possibly got his breakout from there but um, seeing Cat Williams in this he just has a lot of like charisma he has great comedy timing and I think he's really cool which has become very trademark to him is playing a pimp honestly because um he's played a pimp in this movie money mike pimp named slimback in boondocks and of course also in norbit um one as well i think there's even another movie with ice cube and mike kev scott williams called first sunday so i'm not sure if he plays a pimp but it most likely is but when i do think of what the stereotypical pimp is i think of cat williams and as i said even in this movie his performance is it is it, because it's a short film right? even just watching this back this movie is maybe just like 90 minutes maybe even less longer as well and it's really cool because once you do see cat williams in this he does make this role his own like he owns it no matter what and just the interactions he has with like damon <laughs> nether end as well of like damon trying to get a little get a little money mike <coughs> Just like for Damon, like trying to get a little money, Mike at the end. It's really cool as well, and and really regarding like Cat Williams, especially what his comments says. I'm a huge fan of Cat Williams, uh, regardless of like his antics and uh, some of his behaviors, like outside of like Hollywood, we should say he still is a top comedian as well. And who knows if maybe his antics were better, he could have been that success, more success than Cat Williams, but uh, more success than Kevin Hart, because um, as I said, Kevin Hart really only blew up like only a decade ago as well so cat williams was one of those comedians who could have been uh that one that staple comedian there so it's a shame it's a shame because i still think hands down he is a more funnier comedian as well like um of course kevin hart has a more body of work as well and he's just again he has like big big like um hits uh, now especially in the movies and his collaborations with Dwayne Johnson for sure but just like on comedic timing and comedic talent Kevin Cat Williams hands down I put your money all in on Cat Williams as a comedian so I do get like I said him um, his interview on Shay Shay which me and GQ uh, Jamal uh, reviewed on that and I agree with what Cat Williams says and some of the times I do think he embellishes some of his stories as well and um, again I'm not the biggest fan of like you're in the whole comedian circuit and especially people from your community who are doing that and you have to dog them to pull yourself up i think it's unnecessary because i think if you've already got that talent you don't really need to talk about your other uh, peers as well even if you are jealous as well so that's all my thoughts on that but i think so cat williams is the true highlight those are better as well but friday after next is really uh it's like a it's hard to say solid but i feel like it's a decent way to end the trilogy honestly if that's like the last friday that's ever gonna be like i'm cool with that honestly because the best thing is the job it does better is it succeeded next friday honestly um and it, and it does a good way of closing like everyone's arc you know yeah you know like i skip all right so folks yes that is my review on friday after next that came out so guys that's my review of friday after next that came out in 2002 directed by marcus raboy and i believe was produced by cube vision yeah cube vision so uh ice cube's production company took took hold of the second one next friday and took hold of friday after next as well so yeah folks i would love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on friday after next do you agree with what i said do you think there will be a sequel because that's been rumored for years if there will be another um uh, another hopefully good movie it to be a part of this friday series who knows as well what did you think of the new characters that came in like money mike donna katie O'Born, um damon terry cruz as well uh, money mike i said cat williams so what do you think of the new characters what do you think of the setting what do you think of the themes 
all that please put that in the comment section and i would love to hear your feedback and anything i may have missed as well because as i said friday after next is a movie that a lot of people have given their reviews as well i'm just giving my own opinion it doesn't have to be the right opinion but it just happens to be my opinion all these reviews are very subjective as well so it would be nice to hear your thoughts and takes as well so guys i really hope you enjoyed this friday series um and yes stay tuned for the next review which trust me which will be coming very very soon and of course it's 2024 if you haven't already done it please what are you waiting for get your paper right and update your wallet and richie rich is out Shoo! <laughs>